How would you react if you suddenly had to take care of an adorable child? A child literally left on your doorstep. This is what happens to our Mr. Dragon as a cute tiny girl comes along, and calls him daddy. Realizing that she has no place decent to go to, the elder dragon adopts the child. Thus begins the story of a dragon, who becomes a father. He has to learn how to take care of a little girl, belonging to a completely different species. Stay here for more to have a look into their adorable lives. A nameless dragon has lived at the foot of Holy Mount Olympias, since the days when the world was filled with chaos. The dragon has seen the lives of creatures like elves, dwarves, and humans. He's even seen dark kings and queens who lived in glorious castles. The dragon kept himself away from the happenings of the world. He spent his time watching the sky and playing in nature. All until a tiny human girl called out to him. The little girl, covered in rags, in the middle of winter approached the dragon and called him daddy. The dragon begins panicking, saying how he doesn't remember having children with any humans. He suddenly realizes that the girl must be looking for her family and tries to ask the girl where she came from. Her only response is calling him daddy. The girl snuggles up to the dragon's tail, while he wonders if she's a human infant. She was much smaller than humans who sometimes visited him. With his heart swayed, he asks the girl her name and learns that it's Olivia. He comforts Olivia, intent on protecting her until her father arrives. Unfortunately, though, the father in question never appears. Olivia still adamantly calls the nameless dragon her dad. After which she gives him a crown of flowers. He then tries to tell her how he can't possibly be her father, since he's a dragon, and she's a human. When he says that it would be impossible for him to be her father, Olivia starts crying. The dragon panics and asks her if she's from Pias, the village closest to the mountain. Olivia has a look of bewilderment but the dragon continues. He figures that her father probably got lost along the mountain way and that's why he couldn't find her. He tells Olivia that he'll take her back home in no time before getting on his feet. Olivia finds his walking pretty cool and he has a laugh out of it, considering it's been 200 years since his last outing. Once the two are near the village, the dragon changes his form into that of a human. He doesn't want to cause panic in the village, so he'll take this form. He carries Olivia in his arms but notices that she seems to feel sad as they approach the village. He thinks that it's probably because she just now realized that she had been lost. The dragon asks an old lady in the village about the whereabouts of Olivia's father. He is guided to a run-down house on the outskirts of the village. As soon as the dragon reaches her parents' house, he can't believe his eyes. He sees Olivia's father laughing with his friends while drinking. The man talks about how he's glad to get rid of this child. He left Olivia out in the forest, and even brags to his friends how he was smart about it. He says that he told the Olivia since her birth, that she was really the child of a dragon, and he had just picked her up. The dragon listens in disgust as Olivia's father continues to make fun, of how dumb she was for believing the story he fed her. Mr. Dragon also learns that Olivia's mother had passed away giving birth to her. Olivia starts quietly weeping as her real father continues complaining about how the child couldn't even do housework. The dragon suddenly realizes that Olivia clung to the lies her father had told her. She willingly went into the forest to find her real father, the dragon she was told about. He makes up his mind and tells Olivia that he'll be her daddy from now on. Hearing him say that she never needs to return to this place again, Olivia hugs him tight. The two are about to leave, but the dragon kicks the house where Olivia used to live in. Unfortunately, though, he forgets to hold back and ends up demolishing the entire house. While Olivia stares in wonder at how cool this was, the dragon rushes away before anyone can figure out he did it. While heading back, he agrees with one thing that Olivia's father had said. That becoming a dad is really a sudden thing. After taking on the role of Olivia's father, the dragon went out and bought all the books a vendor, had on all sorts of things. From cooking, to clothes to human sickness and hygiene. He was intent to learn everything he could about humans, so he could take better care of Olivia. He wants to make her happy until she becomes an adult and could comfortably live with other humans. He wasn't aware, when that would happen though. 
While he's thinking of all of this, Olivia shows up with a red jewel, telling him how it's just like her dragon dad's eyes. She's finally speaking more than before, and like all curious children, asks him if all the treasure is his. He tells her that he just has all the stuff, because humans kept giving it to him. When she asked why they gave him the treasure, he doesn't really have an answer. In any case, thanks to this thing, her daddy was able to buy her so many books and clothes. Olivia remarks how he's always reading. It suddenly hits the dragon that he's probably been neglecting Olivia by spending so much time reading books. Realizing this, he has an idea. He picks up Olivia in his human form and reads her the story of a princess and her lizard friend. The story is about a beautiful princess who lived in a castle. She had a lizard friend, who was kept as a secret from everyone else. But one day, a servant threw the lizard into a blazing fireplace and the princess got extremely sad. She picked up the charred body of her lizard and kissed its back, suddenly reviving him and turning him into a handsome knight. The two then lived together in the castle, and lived happily ever after. The story was perfect for Olivia and she loved it, even gaining an interest in reading. A few days later, Olivia has already started reading difficult books. Her dragon dad realizes that she must be a genius. In a few days, Olivia is able to properly read the book on ancient mythology, going through the segment written on dragons. Meanwhile, her dad is doting on her for being a genius, filled with pride over how she's so smart. While he's fawning over her, Olivia asks him about the six sages of Rylus. He tells her that they were in fact real people, and he even met the sage named Vandilson. The two talk about this a bit more, before Olivia moves on to another history book. On the 63rd day of being Olivia's dad, the dragon reads about how the voices of ancient dragons possess a great power. Anything they speak aloud is absorbed immediately by children who hear it. He's about to link Olivia's genius with this, but immediately ignores it when he sees his cute daughter call out to him. He then makes her some milk soup by following a cookbook. He's wondering whether he can give her honey as well. He suddenly realizes that he doesn't know how many years it takes a human to grow up. Winter passes by and spring arrives. Mr. Dragon continues to wonder how long Olivia will stay a child. He takes her to go see the flowers in bloom. He lets her explore while thinking how her childhood may be over in the blink of an eye for someone his age. He decides that he'll show Olivia all the beautiful sights and wonderful things he's seen in this world before she grows up. Even with that in mind, he does rack his brain over, how different her way of living would be. He could take a nap for a hundred years, while Olivia only slept for a single night at a time. He realizes that it's also time to move into a better place. He asks Olivia if she wants to look for a house with him. Olivia thinks of a castle, when he talks about a house big enough for his dragon form to fit into. He agrees to the castle idea while answering some of Olivia's adorably innocent questions. He then asks her if she'd like to go flying. Her surprise turns to awe, as Mr. Dragon takes her to a castle he remembered about nearby. Mr. Dragon and Olivia land on the steps of a huge, gorgeous castle. Hearing the noise from the landing, a woman suddenly appears and confronts the dragon. He seems to recognize her, and she does as well, referring to him as the Elder Dragon of Mount Olympias. He greets Miss Claria before she panics and tells him that he must know that the castle belongs to the Dark Queen Meridia. She asks him if he has finally agreed to join the army, she's with. During a pause, Claria notices Olivia on his back and asks him about the child. He happily tells her that Olivia is her daughter. Claria more or less loses it and begins swinging her sword around at the absurd thought, that the daughter of a dragon is a human. Mr. Dragon grabs her sword, telling her to be careful with it, but ends up deforming the hex blade. Claria becomes defensive. She states that she must slay the enormous dragon. Mr. Dragon tries to tell her that he simply wishes to ask the Dark Queen Meridia for a favor. Learning this, Claria stand down and tells him that she'll listen to his request on behalf of Lady Meridia. Dragon Dead casually says, how he only wants their castle. This knocks the wind out of Claria's sails. He further says that since only the Claria and Meridia live here, the castle would have enough space for both him and Olivia. He also intends to bring the castle back to his mountain. Claria faints from the barrage of information. 
Mr. Dragon transforms into a human to check on Claria, thinking how she must be anemic. He takes her inside the castle while Olivia clings to him. He begins yelling for the Dark Queen who appears in a whirlwind of magic. She ominously asks who dares to disturb her from her castle and how no one will leave alive now that they have crossed her path. Olivia points at the Dark Queen and calls her a sheep, because of her horns. It totally ruins the villainous entrance Meridia was going for. After the failed attempt at being cool, Meridia realizes that she's in the presence of the Elder Dragon. She begins panicking as well and asks him why a member of the most powerful ancient race was showing up at the castle of a shut-in. Olivia then gracefully introduces herself to the Queen, before Meridia finally notices Claria in the dragon's arms. She misunderstands and thinks he slayed her most precious friend. She declares that this was an unforgivable offense, even for an elder dragon. She's saying something about displaying her wrath, when Claria groans, clearing up the misunderstanding. Moridia rushes to Claria who apologizes to her for letting her guard down. The two have an emotional moment before Mr. Dragon interrupts. He asks Moridia if he and Olivia could move into her castle. Astounded, Moridia asks him if he has any common sense at all, asking her before stealing her castle. Mr. Dragon explains that he just wants to borrow it, since he needs a place where a human can live. Moridia looks closely at Olivia and realizes that she's a human child. Mr. Dragon further tells her that Olivia is his daughter. Super surprised by the news, Moridia asks Mr. Dragon multiple questions. She asks when he got married and why she wasn't invited. She talks about how his wife must be a human, being extremely into the entire idea. Dad Dragon explains the entire story to the two, and both are left crying at the end. Seeing how polite Olivia is, it tugs on their heartstrings even more, and Meridia agrees to lend the castle to the two. She believes that a single castle is a small price to pay for the future of this adorable child. She says she's fine with giving the castle as long as she can keep her room in the West Tower. Furthermore, having the dreaded Elder Dragon in her castle means, she'll be able to cash in on the best security system in the world. Olivia then proceeds to win their hearts some more, by calling the two women queens and princesses. With everything decided, Mr. Dragon uses ropes from the world tree to fly the entire castle back to his mountain. Thus began the long month of Queen Meridia adjusting to sunlight, fresh air, and an overall healthy environment. After getting the castle back to Mount Olympias, Dragon Dead and Olivia spent a week cleaning it up. Mr. Dragon loves her very much for being an absolute perfect cleaner and a genius, like always. During the cleaning time, both Meridia and Claria stayed locked up in the West Tower. Olivia then asks why a bookshelf in the room is completely empty. Her dad explains that it's because this is going to be her room. Olivia is happily surprised when she learns, that he wants to fill the shelves up with books she likes. She says that she wants lots of books on the six sages and princesses. After the two finish up, Olivia tells Mr. Dragon that it was super fun cleaning together. Before, she only had her hands to clean with, because all the brooms and pieces of cloth in her old house had fallen apart. Mr. Dragon has tears in his eyes from the heartbreaking story. He tells Olivia that he'll do whatever it takes to make her happy. Mr. Dragon thinks to himself how he'll fill the room with all kinds of stuff, and give her happy memories. Even after she leaves to live with other humans, he wants to give her a place she can come back to, if she's ever worried or hurt. They then head to the West Tower to clean up. Mr. Dragon realizes that he probably shouldn't, since Meridia and Claria didn't want them to come there. The father-daughter duo head back, but on the way, Olivia spots an interesting door with a big green jewel, set in the middle. Mr. Dragon observes it and wonders why the door is locked. He remembers how Meridia told them that she'd opened all the doors, except the ones in the West Tower. Olivia breaks his train of thought by asking him if they can open it. He tries to speak against the idea, but looking at Olivia's excitement. He gives in, and pushes against the heavy door. Mr. Dragon realizes it's locked by some weird magic. Before he can take his hand off, the door gives into his strength. The two look inside the broken door when Meridia comes rushing to them. She had sensed the Elder Dragon opening the door and rushed here. Moridia had been trying to break the seal for a long time. 
So she is extra surprised when she learns, that all he did was push on the door a little. Meridia then yells out to Claudia, saying that the library is open. Olivia gets excited, at having discovered a library and walks inside. Mr. Dragon goes in after her, and the two stumble onto a large collection of books. The child makes her dad promise to read her the books every day. Mr. Dragon realizes that they probably wouldn't be able to go through all of them, before Olivia grows up and is taken aback. Olivia then asks her dad if they can ask Meridia for permission to read the books. She even calculates how many books they can read. Her daddy decides that he will read with her, as long as she will listen. Meridia had made the library of grimoires more than a thousand years old. It filled with the history and knowledge of all dark kin magic. The library was her pride and joy, before a group of heroes had attacked her in the castle. They had tried to set fire to the library, but Meridia fought desperately to protect her treasured collection. The collection included Dujinshi too, but Meridia glossed over it for Olivia's sake. She'd managed to stomp the fire set by the heroes before it could destroy the library. But the heroes had managed to place a seal on the library's doors. Since that time, Meridia has tried desperately to open the seal. She is a bit peeved that the Elder Dragon was able to open it just by pushing a bit. He doesn't take the words as praise, until Olivia calls him awesome for being so strong. Ever since the seal was broken, Olivia spent any moment she could spare in the library. The adorable daughter loved to study. In the meantime, Mr. Dragon spent his time practicing his cooking in the castle's kitchen, while using cookbooks as a guide. He seems to have a hard time determining what bite size is supposed. However, he finds it impressive, that the library even houses books on cooking. As he's busy cooking, Olivia comes in to see him. She asks him if there's anything she can do to help him. After all, he is always making dinner by himself. Her dad tells her that it's her job to spend time reading books in the library, while making food is his job. In fact, he's just worried if he can keep her safe. He's a beginner cook and the kitchen is full of dangerous things like knives and ovens. When Olivia tells him that she still wants to help, he thinks for a bit, before telling her that she can air out the books. It basically involves laying the books out somewhere with a good breeze, but away from the sun. This is so the books don't get damaged by mold, stains or bugs. Olivia is excited that she'll be able to help her dad. She goes along with the idea. When Mr. Dragon gets done cooking up some spring greens, mushroom cheese pie and his special milk soup, he notices that Olivia still hasn't shown up. He notes that that it's already past 6. So, he decides to go look for her, before the food gets cold. He goes to the library to find her and sees numerous books left open to be aired out. He feels happy that Olivia is doing such a good job. But unexpectedly, he hears her cast some kind of spell. It looks to be a summoning spell, because the area around Olivia twists with magic. She finishes the chant before she hears him yelling to stop reading the summoning magic. It's already too late by that time, spiders start appearing. Mr. Dragon quickly transforms into his dragon form. He uses his fire breath to destroy the spiders in an attempt to protect Olivia. Moridia barges in due to the ruckus, with Claria in tow. She tells the Elder Dragon not to burn down her prized collection. Thankfully, Mr. Dragon is done clearing up the summons. Olivia sticks to him and asks what those spiders were. Claria explains that the spiders summoned were Adriadne's children. She's glad that they were sent back to the Dark Realm without issue. Moridia is worried over her books, but Mr. Dragon explains that his fire doesn't burn anything he doesn't want to burn. He transforms back into a human. Olivia is worried that he's angry with her. He tells her that it was his fault for telling her to air out the books. Meridia overhears this. She is surprised that a human girl with no mana was able to use the summoning spell. She knows that the grimoires are difficult to use, even for the dark gun. Mr. Dragon is down in the dumps for putting Olivia in danger. His daughter distracts him, by saying that she wants to eat what he made. He then invites Meridia and Claria for dinner as well. So the gang heads off for some food. Everyone sits down to eat. The girls absolutely love the Elder Dragon's cooking. They are surprised to learn that he's such a great cook. They then decide that it's probably because he put a father's love in the cooking. The group has a wonderful dinner. 
From that point on, Queen Maradia started leaving her room more frequently, to spend time with the father-daughter duo. One fine day, Maradia talks to Mr. Dragon about becoming Olivia's teacher. She's decided on it because she doesn't want an incident, like the spiders being summoned, to happen again while Olivia is alone reading books. Claudia agrees, stating that those with power must be taught discipline, regardless of whether they're dark kin or humans. Mr. Dragon agrees to the idea, especially because he isn't too knowledgeable about human social norms. Moridia fires a few shots at him. She says that it's surprising how little he knows about humans, even though he's lived for so long. Claudia rubs it in further, saying that even the dark can know more about humans than he does. Maridia then says that Olivia is at the age, where she should have human friends since she's old enough to start going to school. Mr. Dragon acknowledges that fact, but doesn't really know what he should do about it. Maridia snaps back, that Olivia needs someone other than him to interact with. Thus, the decision is made that Claudia and Maridia will be acting as Olivia's instructors from now on. Olivia peeks in during the conversation, asking what's going on. Her dad explains the situation to her. She gets super excited that the two women will be playing with her. Moridia denies the playing part and says it's only to strictly train her, and teach her how to decode the text of the difficult books. Olivia is still into the idea. So, Moridia starts teaching her magic native to the dark gun. Along with that, Claudia acts as her swordsmanship and martial arts instructor. Besides all the teaching, the women also spent time playing dress up with Olivia. They dress her up as an adorable princess using Meridia's old clothes. Mr. Dragon walked in with desserts, while the girls were playing dress up. He imagines if this is how Olivia would have lived with her real sisters, if she had them. He himself rarely went back to dragon form these days, spending time reading books to Olivia, and making her delicious food. One day, Olivia brings her dad a book to read since she says that even Meridia wasn't able to read it. Mr. Dragon recognizes the text, saying that it was written in ancient Ariel, a language that died off thousands of years ago. It's older than even the six sages of Rylas. Olivia says that she wants to learn the language, and her dad agrees to teach her. The peaceful days went by, as Olivia continued growing. One day, while Mr. Dragon was lounging outside on a chair, Olivia gave him a kiss on the cheek. She dressed up as a bride. Her dad compliments her for looking great in the dress. The girl innocently states that she's going to marry him, when she gets older. She got the idea from the book she read in the library. This book about the prince and princess, who got married and lived happily ever after. Dad Dragon is very moved at the love his daughter has for him. He explains that they can't get married, because he's her father. Olivia doesn't understand why dad can't marry her. He then explains to her how that works, but his mind is on Olivia getting married one day. Before he even realizes it, tears are streaming from his eyes. The only thing that makes him notice is, when Olivia asks if he's hurt. The realization that one day, Olivia would leave him, weighs heavy on his heart. He tells Olivia that even though he can't be her husband, he promises to be with her forever, even if she grows up and gets married to someone he doesn't know, he'll always wish for her happiness. Regardless of how much time passes, he promises to always be her dad. Olivia comforts her dad. The days of peaceful bliss continue for years. Daddy Dragon and his daughter lived happily together. After adopting adorable Olivia, the elder dragon's fatherly instincts developed even further. When Olivia turned nine and wished to go to a school, he had no choice but to send her to a prestigious boarding school, but wait. Is it going to be easy for him? Definitely not. If you want to find out more about the challenges Olivia and her dragon daddy will face before she goes to school, stay tuned. One fine morning, Mr. Dragon reminisces about the time when Olivia walked through the cold mountain to get to him. It had been five years since then. Mr. Dragon decides to not let her ever feel cold again even if he had to control the weather. While he's lost in his thoughts, Clary approaches him and reveals to him that she and Meridia would like to celebrate Olivia's birthday with him. When Mr. Dragon seemed confused, Clary concluded that he might have not celebrated Olivia's birthday ever since he met her. Mr. Dragon had no idea how important birthdays were for humans. 
Maridia entered the scene, showing her disappointment at him for not celebrating Olivia's birthday. She then gives Mr. Dragon a picture book that makes him understand the importance of birthdays. He realized that he messed up big time. Moridia believes that they should hold a big celebration for Olivia's birthday. But Father Dragon didn't know the exact day Olivia was born. Both Moridia and Claudia then close into him, and tell him that Olivia revealed that her birthday was on the day of the Spring Festival. The Spring Festival that was an eagerly awaited day for people to celebrate the arrival of Spring was three days from that day. Meridia then declared the formation of the Olivia Birthday Party Alliance. That evening, Meridia explained to Mr. Dragon that all they need for a birthday party is cake, special dishes, room decoration and presents. When Mr. Dragon thought about getting some jewels from his shrine to decorate the room, Claudia added that it would be better if the decorations were more homely and not so flashy. The girls tell him that they will be in charge of the decoration. Meridia instructed him to prepare a present for his daughter. At night, Mr. Dragon is sitting alone, wondering about what he should get for Olivia. As he's collecting coins to get something for her, he comes across a jewel, and gets a great idea from it. Meanwhile, back at the castle, the girls are done decorating the room. Mr. Dragon told them that Olivia's birthday was the next day, and she'll see all the decorations at night during dinner. The girls realized their mistake, and mentioned how they were just practicing decorating the room. So they proceeded to remove the decorations. Moridia hands Mr. Dragon a cookbook with cake recipes. She also asked him if he had prepared the ginger cookies that she had asked for. Mr. Dragon had made the cookies, but was confused as to why Meridia needed so many of them. She doesn't give him a clear answer and assures him that she'll make sure, that Olivia's birthday party is exceptionally great. Later, Olivia a delicious smell comes out of the kitchen and spots her dad and Meridia there. But Daddy Dragon pushes her out of the kitchen, as he was baking a cake for her. Meridia asks him to get the present for his daughter, while she decorates the cake. She asked Mr. Dragon that won't it be a big deal if he couldn't get the present in time. After thanking Meridia for this, Father Dragon went to get a present for his daughter. After getting the present for Olivia, Mr. Dragon returns home. To his surprise, the girls along with Olivia wished him happy birthday. Olivia revealed that she had asked Meridia and Claudia for help in order to celebrate her dad's birthday. Mr. Dragon was confused, because he had been alive since before the calendar existed, and there was no way Olivia could have known his birthday. Olivia then revealed to him that the Spring Festival was the day when he made Olivia a part of his life. Daddy Dragon remembered that the day he met Olivia, there were decorations on the entrances of the houses in the village. Olivia never celebrated the Spring Festival before, so the day she met him, she had the best celebration of her life. Mr. Dragon realized that the day of the Spring Festival was also Olivia's birthday, because that day she became Daddy's little girl. Olivia revealed that Meridia and Claudia had told her that her dad's birthday was practically unknown. But she decided to always remember the day when he became daddy to her. And that's why, the day of the spring festival will always be Mr. Dragon's birthday. Mr. Dragon gets emotional, tears up and hugs his lovely daughter. Both Meridia and Claudia get emotional as well. Olivia then revealed the beautiful cake that Meridia and Claudia had decorated for them. Upon seeing the cake, Mr. Dragon realized that Meridia had used the ginger cookies that he had made to decorate the cake. Mr. Dragon thanks the girls for throwing an amazing birthday party for both of them. He then takes out the gift he had prepared for his daughter. When Olivia opens the box, she finds a beautiful brooch inside. Mr. Dragon reminds Olivia that it was made from a jewel that she found in a pile of gold coins, when she first came to live with him. She told him that the jewel looked like her dad's eyes. He had thought that the jewel might be a good luck charm for Olivia. So he decided to go to a goldsmith in town, and asked him to turn it into a brooch. Olivia hugs her dad and thanks him for such a beautiful gift. After that, the group had some delicious food together to celebrate the birthdays. Time flew by, and soon Olivia was going to be 9 years old. Mr. Dragon was lost in his thoughts about what to give his daughter for her next birthday, when Olivia came to him with a question. Daddy Dragon assured her that they would throw another big birthday party this year as well. But Olivia had something else on her mind. 
Mr. Dragon realized that it must be about the present, and asked her what she wanted for her birthday. Olivia hesitated at first, but then decided to tell her father about her wish. When she'll turn nine, she would like to go to a school. Later, Mr. Dragon is shown to be in his dragon form, completely shocked and distressed. Meridia and Claudia notice him and ask him if he is okay. Elder Dragon reveals to the girls that his precious daughter had mentioned her wish to go to a school. He has to let her go to school, but he worries that something might happen to her if he lets her out of his sight. Meridia and Claudia believe that they have taught Olivia some useful skills, that will help her face challenges in school. Meridia then tears up because she would miss Olivia if she goes to school every single day. Mr. Dragon realizes that Olivia will make friends at school and will play with them instead of her dad. But he also realizes that Olivia is human, and she should live among other people, and live happily. Over the course of next week, the three of them started looking for a school for Olivia. They wanted the best school for her, and came across a school named Florence Girls Academy. This school has a special entrance exam for 10-year-old girls. Moridia believes that it would be too much for Olivia to take part in the entrance exam. However, there is a silver lining, because of the difficult entrance exams, there will be no weirdos studying with Olivia. According to Claudia, it would be safer for Olivia to live in a boarding house, because it would be difficult for her to go to school every morning from the castle. Both Mr. Dragon and Meridia are still not sure what to do, but Claudia tells them to not panic. First, they need to start preparing Olivia intensely for the entrance exams. During lunch, Father Dragon tells his daughter about the Florence Academy for Girls, which she will be entering. Olivia gets sad when she learns that she will have to live away from her dad. But she understands that there must be a reason why he chose this school for her. Mr. Dragon affirms and tells her that this school seemed to be the perfect fit for his beloved daughter. Olivia read a little more about the school, and realized that it's a really good place. She is sure that the school her dad picked for her is amazing. Two months later, Olivia leaves to take the entrance exam of the Florence Girls Academy. The entrance exam was supposed to be held over three days, so Olivia had to stay overnight at the school. Nobody could accompany her because guardians are not allowed and the school arranges all the pickups and drop-offs. It's been two days since then, and all Mr. Dragon could do was wait. But then, after three days, Olivia returned with good news, she passed the entrance exam. Mr. Dragon could not believe that Olivia passed the exam with flying colors. According to his bright daughter, the exam was very easy. She revealed to him that during her exam, she was given a bunch of problems that she had to solve including problems about great people from the past, problems about magic and even problems involving calculations. But Olivia had a secret weapon, her mentor, and friend, Meridia. She explained how Meridia had dedicated her time to teaching Olivia the intricacies of magic, history, and problem solving. With Meridia's guidance and her own dedication, Olivia had mastered the material and was well prepared for the exam. Olivia also told her dad about the practical exam that involved her using a doll with her magic, and controlling it to attack its opponent using a sword. Since Olivia trained with Claudia, she had no problem swinging the sword using her magic. When Mr. Dragon asked Olivia about the way her magic was measured, she revealed to him that there was a big crystal ball in the exam room that they used to measure her magic. When she put her hand on the crystal ball, it started shining like a rainbow. She told her dad that everyone started calling her a dragon Miko. That was because her magic was just like the magic signature of an ancient dragon. She revealed that she had no problem with the written exam, and the practical exam. However, her heart was pounding when she was about to take the magic exam. Mr. Dragon realized that Olivia must have gotten her magic powers from him, as she had been with him for a long time. He is relieved to know that he actually can be called Olivia's official daddy now. The two then head to Meridia and Claudia to tell them about the result of Olivia's entrance exam. They're extremely happy to know that she passed the exam, and believe that it was all because of Olivia's hard work. The two then told Mr. Dragon that from now on, he would be busy making preparations for the start of the school year, including taking measurements for the uniform, preparing necessary household items for the dorm, and writing Olivia's name on her belongings. In short, Father Dragon had to read the admissions guide properly. 
Claudia suggests that all of them should go to a nearby human town to get all the necessary stuff for Livia. Mr. Dragon checked the invitation card for the ball, that was going to be held at Olivia's school prior to her enrollment. He mistook the ball for an actual fighting tournament, so he didn't want Olivia to go there alone wearing a dress. The group headed to the city of Miranda to make preparations for Olivia's departure at the very first sign of spring. As they arrive at the city, they get fascinated by how big it is. Only Meridia is anxious about going out in public. But Olivia calmed her down a bit, by offering her a crepe. Both Mr. Dragon and Claudia mention how they're glad that Olivia and Meridia are getting along well. The group then heads to the tailor for the measurement of Olivia's uniform. After giving the measurements, they get some household goods and school supplies for her. Later, Claudia tells Mr. Dragon that he must give a family name to the tailor, who was going to embroider Olivia's name on her uniform. Mr. Dragon was utterly confused and didn't know what to do. Olivia then took matters into her own hands and wrote Eldrico, as her last name. She revealed to her dad that she wrote this name on her entrance exam as well. She had seen this name in a book, and found it to be very cool. Father Dragon believes that Eldrico doesn't have much of a meaning in the human world. When Olivia asked her dad if she couldn't use this name, he explained how usually in books, when there's an evil dragon or a violent person, they're called Eldrico. However, Olivia doesn't believe that. She knows her dad is a gentle and cool dragon, not an evil one. She told father that before she met him, every day for her was cold and lonely. But when she met him, every day became warm and fun. She explained that since she was the child of such a gentle dad, that's why she wanted the same name as him. Mr. Dragon gets emotional and understands where Olivia is coming from. He was able to feel the emotions that only humans felt about their children after hearing her full name. Later that night, the group is heading back home. Olivia ends up sleeping after roaming around the entire day. Mr. Dragon carried her on his shoulder. He realizes that living like a human doesn't feel bad at all. He then wonders, what kind of life Olivia would choose for herself. But he knows he's not a real human, and not Olivia's true dad, so he's not sure if he can be what she wants. However, before Olivia went to school, she learned some terrible news. Because of her dad, she missed her first ball. Daddy Dragon was really sorry because he misunderstood the invitation letter. Olivia was upset to tears, the ball is very important for the girls. Moridia decided to organize the ball right in their castle. Soon they were all dressed in the right clothes for the ball. Olivia says that her dad is so cool, he looks like a prince from a book. Moridia tells Mr. Dragon not to stand still, but to ask the young lady to dance. Olivia gladly accepts his invitation, and Daddy Dragon and daughter dance happily. A day before Olivia could leave for her new school, she seemed to be worried about something. She didn't come down to eat her snack. When Mr. Dragon went to check up on her, she told him that it was none of his business, hurting her dad with her words. Later, he tells Meridia and Claudia about this, mentioning how he doesn't have any idea what's wrong with his daughter. Claudia tells him that she had noticed something different about Olivia as well. Moridia believes that Olivia might be feeling a little down because of the upcoming school entrance ceremony. She is experiencing the school entrance ceremony blues. Even though Olivia wanted to go to the school, she was still aware of the fact that she'll see her dad only in summer vacation. Meridia explains to Mr. Dragon that Olivia's concept of time is much shorter than him. But she assures Mr. Dragon that since Olivia is a good girl, she'll be able to make friends in no time. Both Meridia and Claudia believe that Olivia is smart and competent. She will do really well in her studies, gaining their full seal of approval. After that, Mr. Dragon took Olivia out to see his favorite pink flowers. He transforms into a dragon, carries Olivia on his back and flies away. The girl was a little surprised at this sudden flight. When they arrive at the location of the flowers, Olivia asks her dad if the flowers had always been in full bloom. Mr. Dragon explained to her that 300 years ago, he found a single flower growing in that location. At that time, he found the flowers really pretty and wanted more of them to grow. He tried to protect that single flower from all the rocks and other things around it. And before he knew it, so many flowers grew beside that single flower. 
Olivia asks her father if the past 300 years just flew by for him. He affirmed and added, that it was because he was a dragon. Father Dragon told Olivia that he used to sleep for hundreds of years before Olivia came into his life. But after that, every single day that had passed by had become more and more precious to him. He revealed to his beloved daughter that he was worried about Olivia going to school. But now he realized, she could handle any challenge. He assures her that even if she gets in trouble, he will be there in a flash to pick her up. Olivia seemed to be at ease after hearing these words from her dragon daddy. It's finally the day of Olivia's entrance ceremony. Mr. Dragon gets ready for the ceremony and feels nervous because he doesn't want anyone knowing that he's actually a dragon. Olivia, Claria and Mr. Dragon then head towards the school. When they arrive there, they're fascinated by the size of the school. Claria headed inside first and saved a seat for them. Moridia didn't come with them since she was not very fond of going to crowded places. As the two are going inside, Mr. Dragon tells his daughter how there was nothing here when he came here hundreds of years ago. Mr. Dragon could feel a lot of people gazing at him and got nervous. He asked Olivia if he was acting weird in any way. Olivia assured him that everything was alright, but he was making such a flustered face. He explained to Olivia that he's flustered and nervous, because he hasn't done any of these things before. Olivia told him that it's her first time experiencing something like this as well, and she feels nervous about it. However, she also mentions that he is the coolest fathers out of all the fathers present at that school. Daddy Dragon feels extremely happy to hear that, and hugs his daughter. After that, both of them head inside the hall and find Claria there. Mr. Dragon notices Meridia in the form of a cat sitting in Claria's lap, and gets shocked. Moridia wanted to give Olivia a surprise and that's why she came to the ceremony. Mr. Dragon gets happy because he knows his daughter will be delighted to see her. Claria then revealed to Mr. Dragon that the Florence Girls Academy is a really famous school. Local influential people are also coming here in anticipation of future prospects. Mr. Dragon was proud of his daughter who could enroll at such a magnificent school. He remembered the time when Olivia first came to him. She was just a little and fragile girl, but now she is capable of going to a prestigious school, moving up in life. The entrance ceremony officially starts and the students are told to come up to the stage. Mr. Dragon, Claria and Meridia spot Olivia and mention how she is the cutest among all the students present at the stage. Just then, they hear a woman getting annoyed at the fact that she can't even see her daughter, Daisy. She mentioned how it was so irritating that someone superior like her from the Palastoria family was sitting in the auditorium together with the commoners. She believed that the Florence Girls Academy really went downhill. Mr. Dragon introduces himself to the woman who made fun of his name. He also mentioned how a commoner like him came to a prestigious school like Florence Girls Academy. She asked Mr. Dragon which cram school did he prepare her daughter for the entrance exam. Mr. Dragon had no idea what a cram school was and learned about it quickly from Claria. He then told the woman that his family helped Olivia with her studies. The woman mocks Mr. Dragon for being a commoner, and making his family help Olivia with her studies. She also said that even if Olivia was able to get into the academy, the education there will be too difficult for her. When Mr. Dragon told the woman that he would like Olivia to befriend her daughter. However, the woman insulted Mr. Dragon and told him that he should know his place before saying something like that. Just then, Meridia showed herself to the woman who told her to not come near her, as she would bring bad luck. After that, Olivia, the representative of all the students, started her speech. Olivia introduces herself and everyone was shocked to hear her full name. Daisy's mother was shocked to learn that Olivia, a commoner, was the top student of the class. After Olivia's speech, it is announced that Olivia, along with six other students with outstanding grades would be placed in a special class, Class Zero. The Vice President then presents Olivia with a cloak, that was a sign of her being the representative of the Class Zero. Meanwhile, Daddy Dragon felt so moved during the ceremony. He was so proud of his little girl. Daisy's mother mentioned how her daughter will be the top student of the class, and the commoners should enjoy all the glory while they still can. When the woman asked Mr. Dragon about his first name, he started panicking but just then, Olivia and Daisy arrived. 
Daisy seemed to have befriended Olivia. But Daisy's mother told her to not associate herself with someone like Olivia. Daisy apologized to Olivia and told her that she will see her tomorrow. Olivia was confused about the entire situation and asked her dad if he did anything to make Daisy's mother angry. Father Dragon told her that he didn't do anything like that. Just then, a bunch of students approached Olivia. They mentioned how popular Olivia was at school, because she had passed the entrance exam with flying colors. The students revealed themselves to be Olivia's classmates in Class Zero. They introduced themselves as Ruby, Iria, Kate, and Lena. Mr. Dragon had a feeling that all the girls in Olivia's class were nice. He asked them to take good care of Olivia. The girls then took Olivia away with them. After that, the vice principal approached Mr. Dragon and asked him about what kind of education he had been giving Olivia, since she showed exceptional magic skills. Mr. Dragon told her that he just raised her with love. The vice principal was confused by this. She can't understand how Olivia achieved such high results only because of love. After that, Mr. Dragon realizes that the next time he sees Olivia will be in three months during the summer holidays. He used to think that even a hundred years seemed like a blink of an eye, but those three months waiting for Olivia to come home, will surely feel like a very long time.